Well, we're on the move again. We spent uh, four nights, more or less, in the same spot. We just moved, uh, I don't know, three or four hundred yards, didn't we? Yeah, why did we do that? Well, because it was forecast we were going to have hurricane gale force winds. And uh, so we were under trees, so we thought we'd move out into the open. That wasn't the only reason, though, was it? There was a bit of a... <laughs> just ended up a bit of a breeze didn't it it was a bit of a false alarm what was the other reason well we'd been for a walk and all the starlings hundreds and thousands of starlings oh, were yeah. roosting in trees just around the corner in the canal we really wanted to try and capture a murmuration which if you don't know is when they all fly in a <clears throat> well you don't call them Synod flocks do you but they make beautiful patterns in the sky when they all follow each other around and it's quite stunning when that happens. So we moved the boat this few hundred yards just so that we could be moored up ready. And the starlings all cleared off back to where we were before. <laughs> so we've, we've seen loads of them around, but just not been able to capture no, a I've murmuration A little yet. bit of footage, but no. <laughs> so uh, we've got, what are we doing today? We've got quite a few miles to do, haven't we, to get to where That's we want to be. Six miles. I think. Yeah, six, seven miles. We want to a um, couple <coughs> of locks. We want to, uh, well, we need to fill up with water. We need to empty our rubbish. And also we need a shop. And, we've we've um, been living on, not air, but we've used all the last tins of yeah. bits and pieces. I think the vegetables are left to one lemon. What did you say you're going to make a, a courgette? <laughs> courgette and lemon is what we've got. And a few radishes growing in the veg boxes. <laughs> So yeah, it's a gorgeous day again. It seems like we only cruise on gorgeous days lately, doesn't it? It's well, why not? Really good. We can now because we're not in a hurry. If it's a rotten day, like the last couple, we've just been doing crafty stuff on the boat. Yeah. But we've this been doing is weaving. a fabulous canal, isn't it? It's, it's lovely, it's, lovely little stretch. It's there's moorings all along, little woodland walks, big muddy walks. <laughs> Video Sorry, coming up. Studio. <laughs> um, and it's really quiet there's there's no facilities along here but as long as you, it's only short as long as you're prepared it's fine but I guess it's busy in the summer it's been a beautiful canal really lovely yeah really enjoying it anyway we've got uh, on the second lock today how do you pronounce it Comston it's it's Chalmston? it's spelt Chalomston or something like that, but it's it's pronounced Colmston, uh, I think. Anyway, we've got uh, David Bramley, who's a, a Twitter friend and friend to all narrowboaters on Twitter. <laughs> he collects mugs like they're going out of fashion from like those, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's going to come and help us get through the lock. So looking forward to meeting him at last. Come Jess, go on. Uh, roam where you like across fields. You have to stick to designated footpaths uh, and byways. Uh, unlike Scotland, where you have the right to roam wherever you like, more, more or less within reason. A lot of Europe, isn't it, like that? And Europe, as well? yeah. I think there's only a couple of areas in England like that where you can, uh, and that's the uh, Lake District, parts of the Lake District, and parts of Dartmoor. I think, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Interesting fact that half of England is owned by less than 1% of the population. And it's big businesses, big farming groups that uh, own the land. And uh, it's them that don't want you walking across it. 
I don't see, you know, there's, there's, there's a tiny percentage of people who want access across the fields of this country. And I don't think that people like us are going to do any damage whatsoever. We respect mm. the land, we respect the country, respect its traditions. And it just frustrates me no end that I can't just choose a path across a field. As long as I'm not wrecking crops or whatever, I respect there's a field full of crops. But if that field over there is just full of grass and sheep, why can't I walk across it? But it's actually more than that because the, the system as it stands has a network of footpaths all across the country. So Ancient in theory, footpaths, yeah. you should be able to walk anywhere as long as you stick to the paths. But as we've just found, and we've found for years as we've been walking, you get halfway along a footpath and then it's just gone. The, the farmer either ploughs the field and the footpath disappears, or they put a new fence up and don't maintain the footpath. And I don't know what can be done about it because we simply don't have access now. This walk has been really difficult. Um, fortunately, Richie's got real good sixth sense of direction. Otherwise, I, I, I would have turned back long ago. I wouldn't have known where I was. Yeah. But we'll persevere onwards and upwards. Yeah, rant over. Fran. <laughs> so good job I've got a good sense of humour. <laughs> Wild garlic sprouting. First signs of growth in the new year. Oh, smell that is so good. I feel like there's some pesto coming on in the spring. <laughs> oh yeah, it seems my singing went down really well in the last episode. So much so I think I'll make it a regular feature. So here we go with the Beatles medley. Well, a great mooring spot there, a bench facing out to the countryside, and uh, barbecues dotted along the towpath. That's lovely. Wish it was summer. How do you pronounce this? Colmston. Chomston. 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 How do you pronounce this? Chomley Warner. Chomley Warner, same thing. Chomston. <laughs> David's here, true to his word, let us through the lock. And uh, so if you want to um, have some help through this lock at Chomston, 
Be just sold again. get hold of David on Twitter. <laughs> oh, well, I'm happy to help and pronounce. <laughs> Full of local knowledge. So we're going to go in for a bite to eat and a cup of tea now. Cheers. We're just waiting at Charleston Lock. I thought I'd have a quick look at the notice board. And I've never noticed this before. But you've got local information page here. Really important doctors, vets and the nearest pub. That says something, doesn't it? an iron lock and as you can see the sides of it are made of iron surprise surprise apparently the original lock collapsed in 1787 um, because of the sand which was rushing away and the whole lock collapsed so it was then rebuilt by good old Thomas Telford in 1828 so that's you know nearly 200 years ago but I think this is due for some work to be done. As you can see, there are some, um, some tape around one of the paddles. It's leaking really, really badly. We've gone down this far without Rich trying to open the lock gates. It's just opening now on the paddles. So, but yeah, complete iron lock. This has been our mooring spot for the last three nights, I think. Absolutely beautiful, gorgeous view over this side and all around us. And behind us is a fantastic view of Beeston Castle. But we've been here four days and we've not been able to go out. It's been raining and really rotten weather. And this morning we've woken up to this and it's absolutely glorious. So we're going up there and the only thing that's been bad about this is the towpath has been so muddy the dogs have had to be washed off with bowls of water before we could let them back on the boat we've been up to our shins in mud but um it's just so lovely today so this is Beeston and we're off to the castle
glad I cleaned my boots today. Well, it's not every day you get to moor up next to a 13th century castle. <clears throat> we really haven't gone far, have we, this last week or so? I think, well, when you say that, we've gone three miles in a week. So, no, we haven't gone far. <laughs> We're going to be moving today. The uh, battery levels are diabolical. It's been, um, apart from anything else, it's been really windy. And it's just not pleasant to move no. when it's windy and rainy like that, unless you've really got to. Um, and we didn't, so that's it. We found other things to do. Well, yes, yesterday afternoon, listen to these two. <laughs> yesterday we went for a five mile walk to the local shop and we thought we'd uh, cut across the fields to make it quicker. <laughs> oh my, it was so muddy, wasn't it? It was. It took, us, it took me half an hour yesterday when we got back to the boat clean the dogs down and to clean our boots off and uh, very much like this is now <laughs> but this is the uh, this is called the sandstone trail um, and it's quite an ancient whoops oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> quite an ancient path um, and I don't understand <laughs> I don't understand, I would have thought sandstone would have been quite well drained, but apparently not, it is really bad along here. Well, I think oh. it's, uh, <clears throat> this is a farm track, I just think it's years and years of fields being compacted by farmers, yeah. so they're heavy vehicles. But we're oh. on um, a, a, a quite a good, uh, interesting geological area, apparently it's a sandstone plain, but we're on a fault. So quite nearby here, the land is actually tipped and left. Oh, you can't see me. Stand still for a minute. But quite near here, the land is actually tipped and left um, a crack. And in that, there are layers of stone, and that's what's left the mound on which the castle stands. And there are lots of them, little mounds just dotted around here. And it's really interesting. And um, beyond here, I think it's the Cheshire Plain, isn't it? We are on the Cheshire Plains now, yeah. It's, Which it's is flat area. really flat. And um, you can see this castle, well, for 40 something, I don't know if it's kilometres or miles. You're from the Pennines <laughs> right across to Wales, apparently, yeah. It's, it's visible. a 40 mile radius around. So that would have been a great um, lookout point. But, um, hasn't, been, uh, hasn't been occupied in any sense since 1600. So that's 400 years of dereliction and it's never been lived in it was never a home for anybody it was used as a prison the and Welsh. fortification um, but the settlements here go back to 3000 BC Bronze Age yeah. and to think that people were walking possibly up and down where we were now all that time ago and we think we've got it hard when it gets cold on the boat because the fire's not hot enough or whatever how did people survive Anyway, I'm going to start waxing lyrical now, so we better yeah, go. There we go. <laughs> Jess! Jess, what's the matter with you? Oh. I'm measuring the tree. I'm trying to work out how old it is. And I I have to check, but I think that in the open it is more or less a meter for a hundred years. I have to check that. So that makes this tree about 350 years old. That's a conservative estimate. So this would have been standing here through wars and battles and 
who knows what happened underneath this tree. <laughs> come closer, can't see come you. Come closer, come closer. So we're continuing our slow progress up the Shropshire Union Canal. We haven't got to Chester yet. That's a few miles ahead of us. The locks that we've been through the other day are closing on the 3rd of Feb. And originally we were going to get up to Chester, get up to Ellesmere Port and come back in time before the locks close. But we thought, oh, stuff that. We're not chasing our tail. We're not here to be running around for deadlines. So we're just going to wait until the locks reopen at the end of February and then carry on down the Shropshire Union. And it gives us loads of time for exploring and to what to do. We, we're not in this to be rushing around, are we? No. So. so Chester's going to be, be interesting. Uh, it's a really old ancient Roman town. It has the original Roman wall going all the way around it. So uh, really looking forward to that. And also looking forward to having a concrete towpath. <laughs> So, Beeston Castle is run by English Heritage. So we've paid our eight quid each to come up and have a look. I hope it's worth it. I think from what you, well, we'll see. <laughs> I've got nothing to say. It looks good. I don't think that's bad money, really. No, it's, it isn't really. It's, it's got to be maintained and kept, hasn't it? So at least we can bring the dogs in. Often you can't even bring dogs in areas like this. So this is a bonus, we can actually get in. And it's looking good. I did notice in the shop they'd got a knitted knight's helmet. <laughs> well, what's wrong with a metal colander? You can use that. <laughs> <laughs> spot the boat just about there well we really picked the right day to come up here the view is uh, amazing you, you can just see well I don't know how far, a long long way and you wouldn't have seen any of this the rest of the week it's been drizzly and grey yeah so we've done it right <laughs> it's amazing to think we're leaning on the ramparts here and it's amazing to think that uh, 800 years ago people were laying these stones and before that 3000 years ago Bronze Age man was up here yeah they uh, found axe heads and all sorts of things but we've got to keep our eyes open because Edward the second no Richard the second Richard the second had to be a Richard didn't it on his way to battle hid all these treasures here and he went off and fought abroad and uh, got killed and there are stories that no one ever found his treasures so get digging <laughs> Archie. I think it's I think every stone has been turned looking for it it's probably in the canal under our boat so it's a good day for looking at views, it's absolutely stunning. <laughs> we were going to move today, but time's moving on and there's a cafe at the entrance. Yes, 
and with uh, cake. I fancy me a bit of cake. What's the saying? Carpe diem. Seize the day, is it? Yeah. Seize the cup of coffee and the cake while you can. Cafe day. Because there's nothing on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Hand knitted, really.